day out there guys we received another present from team corrali and guys i am super excited about this one the asuga i've been checking this thing out for quite some time thing looks awesome and after getting to drive around and having a lot of fun with the new team corrali spark um, this thing has just been awesome been holding up great having a ton of fun with this thing but guys we're gonna go ahead and check out the new asuga get this thing out of the box and Hopefully take it out for a little rip, at least maybe around my area here. Um, it's been cold. It's been on and off snowing. We've had some bizarre weather. But anyway, guys, enough yakking. Let's get this thing out of the box and check it out. A couple quick little features of the car. This is the 6S. This is the ready-to-run version. They also do make a roller version of this if you want to use your own electronics. Four-wheel drive, and it says 65 mile per hour. I'm not sure if that's stock gearing or with aftermarket gearing. And a couple other little features here on the box. Um, we got... 16 millimeter big bore shocks, the oversized composite arms, um, heavy duty hybrid chassis brace system, which looking to see if this is similar to the Spark. We'll get out of the box and check it out. A few other things also, I see the CNC machined eight millimeter aluminum suspension arm holders. So see how those things hold up. But anyway, let's, uh, let's stop, take a look at the box and look at the machine. Okay, holy smokes. First impression, this thing is a lot bigger than what I imagined. Um, I knew it was bigger than the Spark, but I didn't know it was all this. All right, we're going to go ahead and get the body off of here, get that off, and then we'll check out the inside. And no, it is a very different brace design here in the center. Man, guys, I'm telling you, this car just looks awesome. I mean, the body design on this just looks great. I got the black and uh, red one, obviously. This is the Asuga XLR. And guys, the suspension, even in the stock form on this one, is very nice and plush. Feels great. But as they say, you know, it's the little thing sometimes. Um, you know, there's lots of different manufacturers out there with different buggies and cars and stuff like that putting stuff together. However, it's the little things that make a difference. I'm going to show you a couple of them that I immediately noticed off the bat with this car. Number one, they got a very nice, stout, beefy bumper on the front of this thing. Now, obviously, it's not covering all the arms, but it's covering the main center area. And there's a lot of cushion here, which is nice. It helps protect the front end and the front diffs and everything. Number two is the body. You know, most, uh, pretty much all manufacturers I see, their body designs are just a hole simply through the body. And what always ends up happening is the body tears through and breaks. But they actually put in these plastics on the front and the rear as part of the body that is screwed in to help give it a lot more surface area so your body doesn't rip through and tear itself apart, which is just a great idea. I mean, honestly guys, you know, it might be just a body, but little things like that make a big difference on the longevity of a body. Number three, they actually put together a power button little holder down here that's held in rather than it being velcroed or double-sided tape somewhere it's actually mounted in a little housing with a screw down there which is great and uh you know that way they're not just ripping flopping off flopping around in there having to remount them just little things like that that make a big difference on putting a car together so in here as you can see they have the front chassis um center braces one coming you know from the front bulkhead here which is a, a pretty beefy plastic one that comes on monster chassis and then on top of that there's also this metal one which i'm going to turn the car around here so we can take a look at that but they have the same type of setup on the front and the rear which is really nice uh, hopefully keep this longer chassis from flexing so much and how that center part ties in basically here on the side it is tied in to the front and rear uh, center braces so there's extra support so whenever that chassis is flexing it's actually putting the pressure now on these metal pieces to help cushion that so that you don't get all the chassis flex bend in the chassis bend in your drive shafts and so on but uh looks like a pretty nice design we'll give this thing some good launches here and see how the whole chassis uh, brace holds up but she looks pretty stout and beefy and just like the Suga, they got some really nice, beefy, oversized uh, links on the front and rear here. And this does have front and rear sway bars on this. Um, like I said, the suspension feels terrific on this car. Um, definitely a lot more plush, I would say, than the Spark. Um, but the Spark's a little bit a smaller. We're going to set these two side by side, just so you can see the comparison. 
Also, similar to the Spark, but it looks a little bit different setup, is the rear wing mount. Definitely lots of beef there and lots of plastic to help hold that thing together. And as you guys uh, may have seen the video with the Spark when I was at the skate park, I landed that car from a pretty good height. I mean, uh, if you guys seen that video, landed upside down wing first into the dirt and didn't break anything on that wing, which just amazed me that that wing mount held up. I was super impressed with that. The tires on this are the uh, Corrali Rebel XMS. These tires look pretty beefy. Um, they definitely got, I feel like they might be a belted tire. Probably somewhere in the book or somewhere that tells me if they are or not, but I haven't looked at that yet. But tires feel pretty good and grippy. We'll see how these ones hold up and how well they work. And maybe it'll be another option to try on a couple of my other buggies here. But guys, so far, the design of this thing, really digging it. Uh, love the look of it. And they've taken some of the things that you know i was familiar with on the spark but they just made it bigger <laughs> and longer and uh this thing should be a great flyer i think taking a look at the bottom of the asuga here the thing looks great and again guys these are the little things i'm talking about that um you know they're doing to their cars that are just you know they're nice little touches that they actually put the aluminum little washers down here on the bottom of the skids to help from those plastic um pulling through or the screws pulling through the plastic should i say but um it looks great i can't wait to take this thing out and give it some launches i talked to some other people that have these cars and uh they say they are a great flyer and as many of you guys know the spark has turned into one of my favorite buggies i mean honestly this one is jumping flatter more stable and nicer in the air than my typhon the only difference between the two is I'm, which I haven't got to jump it yet and run it, was I put one million weight in the center differential now um, to help transfer that power more evenly to the front wheel wheels. Now, as a racer buggy and stuff like that, no, you're not wanting to do that. But as a basher, it helps with air control and gives you a little bit more, more control in the air, which is what I was looking for with it. But other than that, the Spark, man, that thing just flies like a rocket and really digging it. As far as the power system in here, it does have a 6S ESC, and we do have the um, 825, 2050 kV motor in here. So I'm going to see what the gearing's like. We're going to run it completely stock the first time on the stock gearing, and then go from there and see if I need to gear it up a few more teeth to kind of get the air control and stuff I want. But again, I don't know if, you know, how much it's going to need. This thing might have great air control the way that it sits, but um, always kind of nice to see a little extra speed, especially on those big ramp launches. So we got the battery box in here. And, you know, I've seen a few guys talking about the, you know, they broke their battery box on, um, I think it was on the Spark, maybe in the Asuga too. Um, now, if you do notice, this piece in here is a little adjustable piece um, that you can take in or out depending on the size of your battery. But it's also a great way because 90% of the times with any battery box, you're landing nose first. You're lawn darting it, and that's usually why something like that breaks. Now, if you want to do it, it's a little trick that I kind of was experimenting with. If you take this piece out... Flip it around and bolt it into these two bolt holes in the very front. It basically gives you an extra support brace in the front. So if you do have one of those front landings, there's two pieces to actually cushion it and keep anything from breaking. Um, I did the same thing on the Spark, and it's been working great. I just noticed these extra little pieces of plastic mounted to the upper A-arm here. I guess they're helped to deflect rocks and stuff like that from maybe slamming directly into the body or going in there, but I guess it helped a little deflector. Now we'll do a little side-by-side -side here of the Crowley Spark and the new Asuga XLR. And I'm going to widen the camera out here. And as you can see as an overhead, um, obviously the Asuga's got quite a bit of length on it. And as far as width, I'll tell you, we'll pull out a roller here and just look at the difference on it. Okay, so on the Crowley Spark, it's pretty much one foot is the exact width on the Spark. And on the Asuga XLR, it is just a little bit shy what is that? Uh, a quarter inch of a sh quarter inch shy of 14 inches wide on this thing. And as far as the length goes, the Suga, just about 20 inches long. And on the Spark, we got almost 17 inches long. Definitely quite a bit of length and width difference on these two. So I can't wait to see. Honestly, I've never had a buggy this large before so i'm really curious and can't wait to take this thing out and give it some launches and see what the air control and how this thing flies because i've never jumped any buggy this large before 
As far as anything else in the box, you got your normal manuals, you got the uh, transmitter lanyard, and you got a nice Team Corrali keychain in there. Controller, same one that uh, came with the Spark. Really like the feel of this controller, honestly. It's got a nice feel to it so far. Have no complaints on that. But I guess all that's left, guys, is a chuck of battery in this thing and at least take her out for a quick little rip around my parking area and out front, you know, see what she rips like and how she handles. And guys, this is what I'm talking about with moving that piece. Obviously, it'll give you a little more room for your longer batteries, but it also doubles up here in the front as another point to help if you do lawn dart this thing, um, just to help from taking the pressure off that first initial front piece of the battery box. Time to take it outside and see what she's got. All right, guys, well, it is windy as all get out out here. Um, we're trying to record without having too much wind noise, but man, this thing is just crazy. You notice a little bit of the dirt on the wing? <laughs> I quickly was just testing the, uh, tuning my steering, <laughs> and I hit the bump coming back in here really fast and ended up lawn digging it first wing into the dirt. Um, didn't hurt the wing at all, which was amazing. But again, that thing seems to be holding up pretty well. Man, she Woo! <laughs> well, first casualty. Man, that thing will pull wheelies when it gets traction. The pavement is not its friend right now. This thing just wants to get up and through. I can just see her do donuts in the pavement. <laughs> yeah. But in the grass and dirt, this thing will pull the front wheels off the ground. Well, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the wind's blowing like crazy and it's starting to snow, so I'm going back inside. Well, it's got its first dirt and scuff marks on it. <laughs> Guys, these tires hook up great in the grass and the dirt. On the pavement, this thing just wants to fly. And um, she's a donut machine on the on the concrete. But other than that, I got to go ahead and cut the plugs off and put the EC5s on this for me. I just kind of put an adapter in there for now. But so far, definitely wants to get up and fly. Definitely can't wait to take this thing out, take it down to the skate park, take it out for a ramp bash. <laughs> and I'll send the new Asuga. Again, big thank you to Team Corrali for sending me this out. It'll be lots of fun, lots of videos coming with this thing. And uh, we're going to try to take this thing out and give her a good good punishment on a little bit of everything. Um, so weather, warm weather is finally on its way. Unfortunately, today is not one of those days for me. But we'll have some good weather coming up here soon. We'll go out to have some proper fun with this. But, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and the new unboxing of the Asuga XLR. Lots of fun to come with this, but that's going to do it for today. So until next time, y'all be safe. Be careful out there. Peace out, everybody.